rigid high quality Pro Street chassis is a key to meeting our goal of 0 to 60 in less than three and a half seconds. Visited total cost involved in Ontario, California and saw their excellent chassis design and weld quality. They were using mostly TIG welding at the time to produce the highest quality spatter-free welds. Their frame design is very rigid with ample cross bracing. The TCI Pro Street chassis incorporates four bar link design allowing almost infinite adjustability. The instant center can be placed far forward even in front of the car if desired. Adjustable front coilover shocks allow variable control for cruising or making very quick launch Anzai 0-60 runs. With all the chassis reaction control possible with a 4-bar link suspension, you need to carefully define and record reactions. There are some interesting software available that can help. This is a rear view of the assembled chassis. The 16 and a half inch section width Mickey Thompson's, the elaborate cross bracing fully welded to the box side rails, and the stainless gas tank are visible. Here the chassis is disassembled, sanded, and primed, ready for paint. This is a view of the painted assembled chassis. The front suspension and rack and pinion steering box are visible. Note the aluminum heads, water pump, and intake manifold on the engine. A six-blade high-pitch fan is also aluminum, painted black. The narrowed rear frame is seed to give more axle clearance. The heim joints attaching the rear sway bar are also visible. The narrowed 9-inch Ford rear end from Curry Enterprises is equipped with Positraction and 31-spline Summers Brothers axles. The heavy rear cross member incorporates a drive shaft loop and is the support for the front of the 4-bar link system. With a narrow rear, a diagonal panard bar is used. Three stubs are welded to the chassis for the roll bar to be installed when the interior is completed. While waiting for the body to be completed, I fabricated the interior roll bar from tubing purchased from S&W. They supplied the 90 degree bends and sections of tubing which I welded together. Pre-planned on some shrinkage, but not enough. The spacing was 3 sixteenths of an inch too narrow between the two major posts, and it needed to match the stub location. It was already welded to the chassis. Having visited a heavy equipment manufacturer and watched them correcting distortion with MIG straightening, I tried it. The advantage of using MIG is the shrinkage is very repeatable and predictable. After five small well beads properly placed and checking after each one, the needed dimension was achieved. The MIG welds used for straightening were ground flush with the mild steel tubing. I would not recommend this approach for 4130 chrome molly. The finished and prime roll bar fit well. It will be finally assembled in the car after the interior is completed. The front suspension consists of double wishbones with coilover adjustable shocks. Disc brakes include vented rotors and Camaro calipers. Rear disc brakes are also from GM, in this case Cadillac, since they have an integrated emergency brake. The low car emergency brake system uses a handle that is similar to that used in the early Fords that was also located on the floor. The brake pedal was not returning quickly, and TCI said I might need an assist return spring. Drilled a hole in a washer that fit over the brake lever and anchored a spring to the bracket attached to the chassis. It works great. An interesting anecdote about the brakes. After several years in use, I saw a car show on TV that said if you don't have a residual pressure valve in the brake line, some fluid will drain back to the master cylinder and create a long pedal and some sponginess. Recall during the initial build I found two residual pressure valves in the rear brake line and wondered why. Was it possible this extra was meant for the front? Check and sure enough, no residual pressure valve in the front line. Added this one from Willward. Brake pedal 
fuel was much improved. We used our 150 amp MIG welder for many items on the street rod. The argon based shielding gas comes from a large cylinder chained to the wall. To reduce the blast of gas at the weld start, we use our gas saver system, the first use of this patented system. It makes the gas cylinder last over twice as long and improves our weld start quality. It simply replaces the gas delivery hose. Patented gas saver system is a simple, inexpensive gas delivery hose with a small ID and a peak flow limiting orifice. It reduces wasted stored gas by over 80%. It retains the system pressure to supply enough start gas to purge the weld start area and to compensate for flow restrictions that occur while we're welding. It has no moving parts to set or wear. Thousands are in use in industry. For more information about our street rod or our patented shielding gas saver system, see our website at netwelding.com. That's netwelding.com. Then click on Car Buffs on the left-hand side. Thanks.